Welcome back. I am Sean. Uh, we are playing Star Trek Online. I have taken you through some tutorials and we're going through our first story arc, which is the original series story arc, Agents of Yesterday. We um, have already completed um, a, lot, a lot of the missions for the story arc. Uh, we have three to go. After the uh, Agents of Yesterday story arc, we return to the normal timeline. Uh, you may have played the uh, Discovery timeline as your beginning character, or you may have missed these altogether and gone straight into the normal missions. If so, we will catch up with you guys in the next couple of missions. Now, we are going to now do Return to Babel, but before we do that, we earned some rewards now from the last mission and something we haven't had before. So if we go into our inventory and we go to our assets, we can see we still only have 2,000 energy credits. Um, we will get more of those as we go on. Uh, nothing really going on in reputation because we um, haven't been able to do any of that just yet. We're not in a fleet. We don't have fleet marks or credits. And again, we can't do that at this stage. What we can do is we can refine our dilithium. Now, you can only refine up to 6,000 or is it 8,000 uh, pieces a day. Uh, but you can pay some money for a lifetime um, subscription to be able to um, pretty much do unlimited. It's not really necessary. Um, if we do this every single day, um, we will just keep topping up our credits here. So at the moment, we have 960 bits of raw ore. We're going to refine it. And now we have 960 bits of what we would call credit, which can be spent in the store or on the exchange or, or we, whatever. Um, we've gone through that um, during the tutorials, so I won't go through that again at this stage because we really don't have enough to do anything anyway. So just remember your daily things now. Go into your assets, refine your dilithium, and, and get that up to millions and millions. At the moment, you're thinking millions. I've only got 960. Trust me, as we progress, that figure will go up very quickly. Um, so we are on to a Babel now. And uh, according to our mission, it looks like somebody from the future is trying to disrupt us. Now, we're in the past. Um, so we're going to go to the 23rd century. We're going to talk to our favorite Daniels. As I said in the last mission, if you've seen Star Trek Enterprise, he pops up quite a bit. And um, there's a lot of timeline-based stories um, in that series. So on we go. On the right, we need to go to Babel. There's Wait. more to this mission than you realize, Captain. Open our big map. There it is, over here. Something's not right. I'll explain shortly. We'll head on over there. On autopilot. Our ship's now got an upgraded engine. She's going a bit faster than in the last mission. Still nowhere near as fast as we'll be going when we upgrade. See so here, you, there are keyboard shortcuts. As I say, I'm not a keyboard shortcut kind of a guy. You can press M to bring your map up, but I'm, I'm more than happy just clicking on the uh, icon for the map. It really doesn't take any longer. Um, so, yeah, it, it's up to you how you play your game. While we're heading here, there are things we could have done, like check our inventory, uh, refine our dilithium, etc., um, but I wanted to show you that screen first. So we we'll just fly along here, um, have a look around. Let 
and down the bottom here we can notice that we got our new officer uh, who has uh, tractor beam skills which we will be using uh, as and when necessary again I'll show you how all these things work um, this particular skill here from um, this officer is torpedo high yield so it gives us a much um, stronger torpedo once in a while um, here um, we can send an engineering team which will heal a hull if it starts to go down and as I say the tractor beam we're coming up to Babel now so we'll slow down Generally, the autopilot will take you into the system. We don't always want to be there. Here, we want to be at this planet. So we'll just head towards the planet, which is a bit lively with the turning when the engines get better. And when we're close enough, we can start our mission. This is a ground mission. So we have our away team. As I've said before, sometimes when you've got more officers, you can actually choose your officer. These three are all going down anyway. Um, this one tells us the skills they have. Uh, Tomet has no skills available at the moment. Um, so we can have a look and see what's going on there. If we go into our character screen, we can look at uh, Tomet and go to skills. And actually... She doesn't have any that we can use, so we're going to need to teach her some uh, at a later date. Um, or scrap that now we've come in here, they've lit up, and there they are. I thought it was a bit unusual that uh, there were no skills showing, and um, it obviously the server took a while to bring them up. So here we are, we can see her skills as listed here, so just ignore what I said. <laughs> but we can teach her new skills, as I say, once we have the correct manuals as in the tutorials. But I will show you that when we get there. So we're going to beam down. So, yeah, sometimes the server can take a little while to load some stuff and... Um, Obviously, when you're doing a tutorial, you uh, talk about what's on the screen, and it's quite good to do that when we see a little blip in the system, and we can explain what's going on and uh, why it's happened, and hopefully uh, watch it correct itself as we are going. So your server speed obviously depends on the server you manage to get on at any one time, and obviously where you live and your internet connection. Hopefully by now we're all on really good uh, BDSL right. 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 systems. I'm what's known as a temporal agent. It's my job to preserve the timeline. You helped me stop one temporal incursion at K-13. There's been another at Babel, and I could use your help with it. Welcome to the temporal ready room. I use it to monitor the timeline. The Nakul have sent agents to a critical point in time. We believe they disrupted the Babel Conference in 2268 aboard the USS Enterprise. I want to send you back there to stop them. You'll be sent back to a point shortly before the conference begins. I'm sending one of our best temporal agents along. I believe you've met. Nice to see you again. It's been some time. For me, at least. For you, I see hardly any time has passed at all. It must be strange to see me looking... Uh, Older. Once you're on Enterprise, deal with the Nakul and make sure the conference proceeds as planned. You'll have a temporal transponder, which will allow me to communicate with you and bring you back. You'll also have these bioscanners. They're short range, but will detect Nakul agents nicely. Do the job right, and no one will know we were there. You'll notice on the screen we get this green writing come along telling us that some characters have uh, gained special items or whatever. There is a conspiracy theory that it's just popped up to encourage you to obtain special items or buy lock boxes and keys. Um, but who knows? We can actually turn that off 
So after this mission, I'm going to go into the options and turn off the fly-ins, but I want to just carry on with this mission. And to show you that they do uh, come on screen, in the tutorial, we talked about turning them off. Um, so I will do that shortly. The situation at Babel shouldn't be happening. Something in the past has changed, and not for the better. And we get to play with a Chekhov this time. It was Scotty last time. Uh, so this should be fun. We are aboard the Enterprise. We can open our map up and have a rough idea of what's going to go on. Uh, this is a conference going on here. We are going to go and uh, see what we can do to repair the timeline. Let's begin by using Enterprise's sensors to look for signs of our time-traveling friends. The computer won't have any details on an Akul, so you'll need to recalibrate the sensors manually on the bridge. Oh, and one more item to be aware of. Ensign Pavel Chekhov is currently on duty on the bridge, which is why I will be remaining here out of sight. As much as I would like to visit the bridge again, two of me in the same place would raise questions neither of us wants to answer. Let's get to work. I will check with you again after you are done on the bridge. One thing we notice here uh, is we're all carrying uh, weapons in plain sight on our backs. Um, obviously, we do have them. We can use them. But you can turn that off. You may not want to see um, those weapons. It may ruin your visual experience. So we can click on a button here and hide them. So now it doesn't look like we're carrying our weapon, and it's much more uh, pleasing to look at, I think. Some people like to uh, have them on. It's a personal choice. Again, it's everything. Uniform it for some time. It's a little snug. And here we are on the bridge of the Enterprise. Um, have a little look around. It really is quite stunning to see uh, the faithful recreations of our favourite starship. Of course, depending on how old you are, this may not be your favourite starship. It may be uh, Enterprise C or D or E or Voyager or, or whatever. We can uh, have a look around here. It appears to me that Uhura is uh, in command at the moment. She has the con. Um, but we can't uh, talk to her at the moment. We need to go and access this console to recalibrate the sensors. And here we get to play with our waveform modulation. Nice work. I'm getting some readings from Deck 11, but I can't pinpoint them. Some sort of interference. We'll need to get close and scan by hand. Start with the mess hall. There are a lot of people coming and going there. So as, uh, as I was saying, to play with the waveform scanner, which we use the up and down, left and right arrows to match the waveforms. So back out to the turbo lift. And now we're going to deck 11. Now here we can see we need to scan the delegates to see if they are from our own time or another time. So we'll just have a wander along here, check out uh, the characters as we go. And we're in the conference room, or at least the uh, mess hall where they're all meeting. And the people we need to scan have the yellow arrows coming down.
and take your time to look around at the characters, either all very well developed. Probably most people just run up to the next arrow. Hey, that's your choice. But um, I like to have a look around on my first run through of a mission or a game or the second one. And after that, if I'm doing it on a different tune or, or redoing a mission, I will probably just bowl on up to where I need to be. Vulcan, I would speak to you. It does seem unavoidable. How do you vote on the Corridon in mission? Senses are showing that one of the delegates is leaving the lounge. Follow him. He might be trying to slip out before you can get a scan. Is there something I can help you with? Okay, so now we have some options of what we're going to say to him. Um, in the great scheme of things, it makes no difference. You will still uh, end up going through the mission. Um, so we can say to him, um, uh, option A or option B. Oh, should I be concerned? It was my understanding that the transporter filters out biohazards. Of course. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'll be on my way. Now, here we need to go back to uh, see Chekhov. You can check out where we need to go on our map. Uh, it's really easy on these early missions. It's just around the corner. We can run, of course, using our uh, shift key. Looks like they're on the move. Though I'm still getting a lot of false readings on the sensors. Let's keep checking the deck. Like the old Russian saying goes, two heads are better than one. Being here takes me back. It was quite a different time for Starfleet. Head back toward the reception. Now notice here there is a green circle, so uh, evidently that's where we're meant to be heading. There he is. Wait, that's Ambassador Gav. There's nothing we can do for Ambassador Gav, unfortunately. Memory serves. Captain Kirk was attacked next on deck five. Uh, 
and we'll pick this item up. It is a hypo. We uh, don't need to um, equip that right now. We already have some. So we'll pop along to deck five. We'll see our green circle up in the minimap with uh, a target or enemy um, right there. And notice there it said we were held. That meant we were restricted, restricted in moving. The captain's wound is serious. He'll bleed out if we don't help him. Stabilize him quickly. Dr. McCoy will be here shortly to finish the job. Which is why in our skills um, we have an option to increase our resistance to things like that. Now it looks like uh, Captain Kirk is uh, not in a good condition. So let's go and um, see what we can do for him. Good. It looks like the captain is stabilized. We need to move. I've detected Nakul technology in engineering. So to get to engineering, we need to go back to the turbo lift. And take that down or up, depending on what deck we were on. Obviously, um, and here we are. We've been here a couple of times already in the last mission. And um, Mr. Scott is Someone busy. A bomb in here. I cannot defuse and keep the mains online at the same time. Wait, Chekhov, is that you? You look older than me, laddie. And you, the last time I saw you was on the Rosanna station. Something was dodgy then, and it's more than a wee bit dodgy now. It's complicated, Scotty. We've been sent back in time to keep the Enterprise from being destroyed. Aliens are trying to alter the future of the Federation. There's no time to explain. You have to trust us, old friend. We're here to help. All right, lad. You can start by helping me keep this ship from blowing to pieces and get rid of that bloody bomb, if you can. Now here, Scotty is going to tell us what to do in the right order. So we need to uh, listen up and also look for our flashing lights. Divert power to the number six shield. And here we go. That's over here. Number six. So do listen. Some people don't and hope they're just going to get to button now push. Check on that bomb. That's not going to happen. Auxiliary power, two weapons. Auxiliary power, two weapons. Now, finding that uh, particular console means having a look around, clicking on the right option. Otherwise, the bombs are going to go off. Good work. Now check on that bomb. Back to the bomb. We have to keep returning here. Repair teams to deck 19. work. Now check on that bomb. The captain's ordering me to cut the power? Uh, I see what he's about. We can't disarm this bomb, but we need to get to that Orion ship anyway. We can take it with us. Why not just beam it into space? We can't let that ship be captured. It has dangerous technology on it. Scotty, I need you to trust me. That ship needs to be destroyed. You can't tell anyone what happened here. 
It could damage the timeline irreparably. Besides, I'm captain now, so I technically outrank you. All right, lad. I'll take you at your word. Once you're ready, I'll send you and that bomb over. Okay, so we need to beam onto the Orion ship. Click of a button and away we go. Good luck to you. Energizing. Now, what's this? The Orions will lock down their ship. We need to override their security systems. Now, if you don't take unnecessary risks, there were several enemy shooting there. I came around the corner a bit, so only one was uh, firing at me. You'll survive a lot longer. The gung-ho effect, will kicking. But as I say, I like to play a little bit more um, the way I would probably do it if I was there. At this stage, at this level, at high levels, you can actually just stand in the middle of people and kill them, but... We're a long, long way off that. We're talking level 60, 65 and above um, abilities before you'll get close to be able to, able to do uh, things like that. Now, as you can see around the corner, there are going to be some enemies, and the easiest way to deal with them as you're going around the corner is to hit your tab key, and you will immediately start targeting and shooting at the enemies. We'll take a little bit of uh, cover. Our shields are losing power, so we can use one of our shield charges to get them up. There's no point taking chances. And so we deal with uh, the enemy that are there, and we have three things we can pick up. So before we move on, let's pick up these items. Stay in a safe space and have a look what we have. Is any of this stuff useful to us personally? Um, no, we've managed to get some uh, shield charges and another hypo, um, but they will be of use to our team. So let's go to our team, let's drag them to um, our crew, because this guy has nothing in which to resuscitate himself or his weapons, so we'll give him stuff that he can use as well. So look after your team and your team will look after you, of course. goes without saying. Right, onwards. And again, finger on that tab button and uh, we can immediately fire. We can drop down our mortar in the doorway. That'll be firing on them as well and distract them a little bit. Sometimes they will look to destroy the mortar rather than kill us. And it gives us more time. And another item to pick up, which says it's a uh, recoil compensating armor I'm going to two. try to attach the bomb to the Orion ship's engine controls. I'll need you to cover me. See if you can hold them at the doorway so they can't shoot me in the back. So we'll just cover check off for now, and here they come. Our photon grenade launcher is still there. They haven't managed to destroy it, so that's going to help us as well. 
Our shields went down, but they've come back up, so we do not need to use a booster there. So they're going to send in several uh, teams to try and disrupt what Chekhov is doing. So we've just got to um, take care of him. So we've finished that part. We need to beam up. But the bomb is in place. Not much time left. We need to get out of here before we go down with the ship. But we do have things we can pick up. So let's do that first. Take the items. And also, uh, let's remember, we're in our safe space now. The, all the enemy are dead. So let's have a look at our inventory and see what we can put on our uh, characters. Here we have a, a level 2 shield. We already have a level 2 shield, so it's not any good to us. Uh, there's also some armor here, which is not as good as what we've got. But... It's possible that it's better than what some of our crew have got, so we'll swap that out. Now remember, if it's a uh, ordinary level item, it's got no value, so we will just dump it out of our uh, inventory. Um, and in here, Tamet has no body armor, so we'll give her the body armor we picked up, because we're nice like that. Now these weapons here, uh, she's got a current uh, standard phaser. The uh, Mark II is a lot better, so we will drag that onto her there. And we'll see that we have a couple of Mark IIs here with zero value. Uh, we don't need them, so we'll dump them. And there we go. And we're ready to beam up. That was close. I'm glad I got you out of there in time. You're both valuable agents. Of course, no one will know what you've done today, with the exception of Commander Scott. That being said, this won't be the strangest thing he'll see in his career. Not by a long shot. Indeed. Comes with the job, I'm afraid. In the meantime, I can send you and Captain Chekhov back to your respective timelines when you're ready. That was quite an adventure. I think you have the makings of a fine temporal agent, my friend. As good as it was to see Enterprise again, I have other duties to attend to. We're preparing for a very serious event, the Battle of Procyon V. That conflict will determine the... And his voice is cut out um, <clears throat> because we need to click next. Ah, but you don't need to worry about that now. Enjoy your time on the frontier of yesteryear, a time that will never come again. Because he doesn't want to tell us. Okay, we can return to Sector Space, which is basically Daniel sending us back to our own timeline. And here we are. We um, a lot could have gone wrong. Have completed today. that mission. We could have lost critical figures in history: Sarek of Vulcan, James Kirk, and the crew of the Enterprise. The list is long. However, the timeline was preserved thanks to you and Captain Chekhov. The Babel Conference proceeds as planned, and Corridan is admitted to the Federation. Well done. I'll continue to monitor the timeline for incursions. I hope I can count on you again when the time comes for action. So here we can collect our rewards, but we need to make a choice as we looked at before the start of the mission. Do we want a Vulcan a tech officer, a human tech, or a female um, terabyte? Um, tell everybody, <laughs> right? Oh, dear me. Um, so which options are going to be best for you? 
is uh, really up to your game play here. I'm going to go for the Vulcan because he can upgrade my beam weapons and I prefer beams. So we just click on him to highlight the little dot here, collect our rewards. Congratulations. And we've uh, gained significant amount of points that that's what says congratulations to us. Now here's our bridge officer. We can uh, either allow him to join our team or say not now. If we choose not now, he will sit on another screen where we can use him at a later date. But we uh, still have very few bridge officers, so we're going to allow him to join uh, us at the moment. We can always um, fire him at, at a later date, but we'll probably end up, once you get your officers, they do seem like family, and it's quite rare to uh, actually um, get rid of one. So here he is. Once again, we can change his name. Monitor stations are detecting large fleet movements toward Federation space, and they're refusing all of our diplomatic hails. We're doing all we can to prevent a war, but it's not looking good. I want you to join a task force I'm assembling. If this goes south, I want my best people on the front line when it does. So Admiral Garrick just come over us. We'll come back to him in a second. As I was saying, we can change his name, change his uniform uh, once we've decided if we're going to have a separate uniform to the standard ones. Now, his name here is Vanit. Makes no difference to me if he's called Vanit um, or not, so we're going to leave that and just click OK. Uh, actually, um, no, we'll rename him so you see how that works. Click on rename and give him a name. Um, most welcome seems to start with a T. Let's call him uh, uh, T Van. How's that? And again, we can give him a little bio and a little backstory if we want to. First and last names, that's entirely up to you. And you see his name's changed here. Uh, so we can now. Um, Look at this mission that Garrett has given us. Again, tells us our rewards uh, if we complete it. And we're going to accept it because we're going to accept every single mission. That's the whole point of the game. Stay safe. And it's going to be tangled webs. So uh, on the right-hand side, the Federation should be having mission. significant issues with the Tholians at this point in time. I've been scanning the timeline, and I think I found the problem. Two years ago, a Tholian colonial fleet was destroyed. The Tholians blamed the Federation, and increasing hostilities have ultimately led us here. This is something I'll need your help to correct. Okay, so Daniels is telling us about that mission. Um, yeah, I was saying the missions appeared on the right-hand side here, uh, what we need to do. Uh, sometimes when we are talking our way through these missions, we will get interrupted by uh, characters in-game popping straight up to tell us what's going on or about the next mission. So I apologise if they uh, do that. I will try and, t and uh, just let them carry on talking before I do, uh, obviously, so you don't miss what they're saying. Okay, so we can go into uh, I've pinpointed journals. I've in questions. Setting temporal transponder back two years. We need to correct the timeline during the Defiance encounter with the Tholians. And we can look at our episodes and see that we have now completed uh, Return to Babel on our next mission will be Tangled Webs. And only two to go of the Agents of Yesteryear uh, story arc, which is our original series arcs for these characters. Before we come into the uh, the full game as such, um, if we go to available, of course, it'll tell us all the missions we've got uh, that we can do. We've still got this Phoenix prize pack um, to collect. Um, I will look at that in the next um, video. And here is our progress of the missions that we are involved in. So we've already spoken to Daniels. Um, so we have to um, go on to the next part of this mission. So thank you for watching Return to Babel. 
And coming up next will be Tangled Webs. If you're watching live, I'm going to end this video now. So please follow me and hop straight in to see the whole of the next mission. If you are on YouTube, of course, subscribe to see when the next mission pops up. Uh, for you live viewers, I'm going to do that in a couple of minutes. So thank you for watching and I'll be talking to you very soon.